let's try a little cold start here. It's currently about eight degrees Fahrenheit. That's about minus 15 degrees Celsius, I think. And we're gonna start the old rollback truck up. I haven't run it for a while. I need to get it inside and do some work on it. I have not plugged it in. I don't think it's gonna matter. This L10 Cummins is the best starting engine I've ever seen. So here we go. about it but it started right up We've got to fix a few issues on this truck, but the big one is the lights. So this is all wrong. The parking lights are on and the four-way flashers are on. But you see that I'm getting kind of a lazy flash on three of these lights. Right now it should be solid, 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 solid. And then the outside two should be flashing. So I don't know what's going on. We lost a ground or uh, a wires across or something's going on. So I lost all the marker lights behind the cab. The headlights work fine, the front marker lights work fine, but everything related to the back of the truck is, is all wrong. The only thing that works is the license plate light, which I don't use. So yeah, I don't know, I think I have a wiring diagram for this truck, but it's probably not going to help us because it's the wild west when it comes to these cabin chassis trucks. Once it gets behind the cab, you're pretty much on your own. And we'll start with the visual inspection. I notice a few things right off the hop. So there's a, a cord hanging down here by the winch. I don't know what that's for. It does not appear to be a fresh kill, so I think it's been cut for quite some time. That's probably not our problem. However, I noticed that the heater on the purge valve on the bottom of the air dryer is not plugged in. That's not right. So I don't know what happened there. Well, so we got some wires kind of... Okay, now well, there's the other end of our connector, so it must have, something must have ripped the wire out. So I don't know, maybe when I raise the bed to tilt it, I ripped that wire out. I don't know. Alright, well anyway, we'll have to fix that, but I don't think that has anything to do with our, our wiring for our lights. At least I, I couldn't see that being the problem. Okay, I popped open this little junction box here. I was doing some testing. It would appear that it's good. At least back here. What's that one? So whatever the problem is, it must be from here back to the back. Okay, so the problem is we've got power on both sides here. So my test lights hooked to ground and I'm getting flashing power on one side and steady power on the other side so I would assume that's the that's the marker wire light and then the ground is just flashing through whatever the turn signal relay is so I don't know what's causing it but that's the problem hmm pretty sure white is the ground and what's that melted into it a black wire maybe I don't know. Something funky going on here. And that's not hooked up to anything. So, yeah. Well, it would appear that we've had some meltage going on here. So it looks like this wire here used to be connected to this wire here. And somehow it rubbed through this wire here and caused all sorts of problems. So I'm wondering Maybe we can try to test this a little bit. 
Oh, let's just get rid of this butt connector entirely. What do you think? 16 gauge? Yeah, we'll try it. So we'll hook that up to that frayed wire there. And this to this. Then we'll take this, hook it up to the ground. There we go. So there's your problem, lady. She tried to melt herself. So we need to fix that. Looks like we need to fix quite a few things. I don't know what that is, but it looks pretty scary. Probably something we're not going to like inside of there. Feels, feels kind of scotch locky. I'll bet you anything that's what it is. So you know me. When I find scotch locks, I just start cutting. Yeah, buddy. I call it or what? Scotch locks. Can you believe that 3M has the nerve to call these things weatherproof? Yeah, right. I got some secret goo inside that's supposed to keep the green crusties away. Doesn't work around here. Not one bit. So here's the deal guys, there are lots of ways to connect two, three, four wires together that are perfectly waterproof, weatherproof, life proof, that will last forever. None of them involve scotch locks. Okay, no more scotch locks. Nice shrink fit connectors on everything. That's not an ideal spot to ground, but we're gonna do what we can with what we have. I don't have really any place better to go with it, so we're gonna go there. And it looks like we got pretty much all the lights working. I do have one bulb that's bad, so I had to replace this one. I have one of those on hand, but there's a one of these three wire bulbs for the, the stop is not working so I gotta get a new one anyway not too bad of a repair I guess but yeah the wiring is pretty sketchy on this thing that was originally a, a, a sealed harness that ran through this tube right here but it's been hacked up so many times now that there's just not a whole lot left of it I'm thinking I could drink a beer with the guy who wired up this truck this is this is nice We've got about a six foot section of wire here and it had seven butt connectors. I actually replaced two of them along with a short section of wire before I figured out how deep the problem was going to go. So you see they use these non heat shrink butt connectors and then they crimped them wrong by piercing through the insulation and then they just wrapped them with electrical tape and the rest is history. But this fella, he was real smart. I've never actually seen this before. See, this guy figured out that loom clamps or zip ties, you know, that was going to require drilling holes and doing a lot of work. So what he did is the right thing. He just took this wire, tucked it up here underneath of this C-channel part of the frame, and then covered it with silicone caulking glued it right to the frame of the trailer or frame of the truck so yeah don't believe I've ever seen that done before <whistles> yeah buddy all working at least for the time being so on to the next thing a few people have been complaining about a lack of machine tool content on the channel so here we go this is a Herco VMC on the rollback truck. I went to Chicago on Monday and picked this thing up. Brought it back here to my shop and then the weather kind of just 
went south on us and we haven't had a chance to get it delivered to its final destination. It is headed for the St. Louis area. So I was told it weighs 21,000 pounds just based on the way it drives. I don't think that's the case. So it's lighter than that. It's legal on all dimensions. We've got a few accessories here, chip conveyor, coolant tank, whatever. There was a chiller up in the front and yeah. So I got it chained down the way I usually chain them down, which is, you know, chains around the base. And then I do two straps on either side of the sheet metal. The sheet metal is actually pretty strong. You know, it has some, some structure on these big machines. So no worries there. And then I tarped it, which I'm not any good at tarping. You know, it's one of those things where if you don't do it all the time, you, you just don't get any good at it. And I don't do it all the time, so I am no good at it. The hardest part is the front, in my opinion, because you got to keep the air from getting underneath the tarp and blowing the thing around. So if you can get the front right, the rest of it usually will be fine. Anyway, this chiller here is leaning pretty bad. I don't know what to do about that. It broke through the pallet, and so I just tightened down the strap and it rode that way for a couple hundred miles. So I don't think we need to worry too much about it. So the biggest obstacle this morning is the temperature. It is about seven o'clock in the morning and it's currently minus 13 degrees Fahrenheit. So I think that's about minus 25 degrees for the, the rest of the world. Anyway, I'm a little worried about my fuel. So we're gonna pour some of this house diesel treatment in here. Just a splash will do you. And then we're going to so I gotta get fuel here pretty soon. I'll keep adding the house to the fuel just so we don't have any problems with it gelling up. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'll try to bring you guys back when we get some more action going on.
Is that conduit okay? That big plastic conduit? I think it'll just tuck up out of the way. This is the scariest part. Oh, here we go. Nice that they both came off at the same time. They're gonna be real close. Last time we tried that, we just them all up and got the skate hung up, as I recall. We'll put our safety first block under here. If it'll stay. This GoPro's got pretty good image stabilization. I tried this one time with my regular camera. It came out like a drunk was holding it. Here we go. They're both down. See, that was it. Now I got nothing. Okay, we might have to pull it. Or I might have to suck out from under it. I both are sucked out. I feel a lot better now. Yeah, that's good. We can spin it now. When we pull that away, you're going to get a big old wrecked blade in the background. <laughs> Nobody will notice. 